Maybe you don't consider yourself the next Einstein, and possibly you're a little bit intimidated by the science section. Well, guess what? I'm Kyra, your guide for everything you need to know about the ACT science test. And let me begin by reassuring you that you don't need to be a science scholar to excel on this part of the test. All you'll need is a general and basic understanding of biology, chemistry, physics, and earth and space science, as well as good reading and inference skills. You typically won't need to recall specific scientific facts from high school. In fact, it isn't even necessary to understand all the data that's being presented. Here are some strategies to help you ace the science portion of the ACT. In the interest of time, you should read the question first. And although there will be passages to read, you should, as a general strategy, read as little as possible and scan the text for the answers. Most unfamiliar science terms will appear in italics and will be defined. Go through the passage and circle all these terms and underline their definitions. Remember, the test booklet is yours, so feel free to mark up the charts and graphs so that you'll better understand them. As you read through the passages, some of the information presented may be familiar to you, but concentrate on only using the data presented. Remember that you're being tested on your ability to understand and interpret the data in front of you, rather than your recall of outside knowledge. Now, the questions for each passage won't follow the order in which the material is presented, so you don't have to answer the questions in order either. You should note, though, that while the passages and questions don't increase in difficulty, generally, the first question in each passage will be fairly simple and straightforward. The last question in each passage will likely be more complicated. Circle your answers and write the letter of your answer in large print next to it. If you get stuck on a question, choose your best answer and move on. Circle the question in the test booklet so you can go back to it if you have time. Here's a pro tip. In many cases, the right answer will use words like generally, most likely, may, and often, rather than more definitive language like always and every. Keep that in mind when you read your answer choices. You will also see a lot of questions with answer choices that have yes or no in them. First, identify the correct reason for the answer. Then, make sure that you are answering yes or no accordingly. Let's look at this passage about an experiment. A solid wooden chip was placed at the bottom of a sample of each of the liquids 1 to 10 from experiments 1 and 2. If the wooden chip floated to the top of the solution, F was recorded in Table 3. If the wooden chip sank, S was recorded in Table 3. The procedure was repeated for various types of wood. Here are the question and answer choices. A student claimed that hickory wood is denser than oak wood. Do the results support her claim? Choice A is no, because in liquid seven, oak floated and hickory sank. Choice B is yes, because in liquid seven, oak floated and hickory sank. Choice C is no, because in liquid seven, oak sank and hickory floated. And choice D is yes, because in liquid seven, oak sank and hickory floated. Did you notice that the wording in choices A and B are the same except for the yes and no? It's the same for C and D. First, let's look at liquid seven because all four answer choices refer to it. As you can see from the table, hickory floats and oak sinks. So cross out choices A and B because they indicate the opposite of the results shown. That leads us to choices C and D. Now, do the results support the claim that hickory is more dense than oak? Hickory floats and oak sinks. So the results do not support the student's claim. The correct answer is C. Notice, we didn't need to know any of this information before reading this question. Everything we needed was right there. Finally, in addition to the values provided in the charts and graphs themselves, always take notice of the units of measure and be aware of the keys and notes outside the charts and graphs. All of this information is there for your benefit, so take advantage of it. Whether or not science is your best subject, 
you should be able to earn a high score on this section simply by carefully reading and marking up the passages and data and employing the strategies mentioned in this lesson. And maybe your high ACT score will lead you to a bright future in the sciences. Who knows? Just remember to make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout the course.